to celebrate the spooky Halloween season that we are currently in. Today we're going to be taking a look at my picks for the top 15 best horror comic book characters of all time. This is happening right now, coming at ya. Hello to all of my horror comic book aficionados, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. I'm sure by now you've already noticed that there's something quite not right with my voice. I apologize, I'm a little under the weather, have a little bit of laryngitis, but that will not stop me. I will not rest in my efforts to bring you geeky content. So last year, around this time of year, we did a video on the best horror comic books of all time, and the response to that video was great. So now that we're in October again, I've had a few requests to do another horror comic book related video, and the request that I'm thinking of specifically is the request from a friend and longtime subscriber to the channel, Backpack Reptar. Backpack Reptar, shout out to you, this one's for you. So let's get right into this list, starting with our horror comic book character that is number 15 on this list, and that is none other than Morbius, the living vampire, who made his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man number 101 from 1971. And to say the least, his first appearance was absolutely incredible. His story was, I believe, just a, um, a two-issue arc, and it left a lasting impression awesome character. Actually, he became so popular that years later, they adapted Morbius's origin story from the comic book into an episode on the Amazing Spider-Man animated television series, which was all also really, really great. The bite from the bat somehow made me feel stronger. I feel energy surging through me. I can hear every heartbeat around me. And I can defy gravity! I've always loved Morbius as a character because I feel that he's always effectively balanced that line between being a horror character from the weird, mysterious, and macabre and being a superhero character or superhero villain. In our number 14 spot, we have the colorful demon Etrigan. Really hope I'm saying that right who is a Jack Kirby creation that made his debut in The Demon number 1 from 1972. This is during that era when Jack Kirby left Marvel and went to work for DC for a bit, and his work at DC was just as great as his work uh, that we saw when he was at Marvel. Like I said, originally this character appeared in his own series, but even years later, DC continued to use him in their more um, obscure horror type titles. And um, the appearance that I'm thinking of in particular is Alan Moore's run on Swamp Thing. Ghost Rider is the character that we have in our number 13 spot who made his first appearance in Marvel Spotlight number five from 1972. And actually the Ghost Rider that we know with the flaming skull who rides a motorcycle is actually a, a recreation. There's actually a Ghost Rider that preceded this version from the 1950s and 60s, if, if I uh, recall correctly. And uh, he looked more like a ghost and he was always uh, depicted riding a horse. Even though in his later years, the Ghost Rider was portrayed more as this anti-hero superhero type character, I really feel that uh, in his earlier years, he balanced this line between superhero and supernatural character effectively. Now, if only we can get Marvel to make a good film about this character, I feel this character has so much potential and would be amazing in a movie. Our next character on the list is Andrew Bennett. And he's probably one of the lesser known characters on the list, but that does not mean he does not have great impact as a horror character. He's actually from uh, the I Vampire series, which I feel that DC has not really done a lot with. Uh, I've read some of the earlier I Vampire stories back when it appeared in House of Mystery, but my favorite portrayal of Andrew Bennett is in the New 52 relaunch of Ant I Vampire, which was written by Joshua Hale Filyakov and art by Andrea Sorrentino. Solid, solid story, solid read, and I would really recommend picking up the uh, trade paperback for uh, the New 52 I Vampire uh, for a really great horror comic book read. 
Next, we have the Phantom Stranger, who made his first appearance in the Phantom Stranger number one from 1952. And this is another character that I feel doesn't really get a lot of love in the horror comic book world. He's been around for a really, really long time. I've read numerous interpretations of the character, but again, I think that my favorite interpretation of the Phantom Stranger by far, thus far, has to be uh, the new 52 relaunch of the Phantom Stranger. Uh, and this was a work that was done by Dan DiDio. Uh, and I'm talking specifically about the first 12 issues or so. This was a really solid, solid story. And we get a lot of background on the Phantom Stranger. This is a character that really didn't have a lot of background story and his origins were very dubious. Some may like this uh, because it gives like an air of mystery to the character, but I personally liked finding out a little bit about the Phantom Stranger and I won't give away what his origin is, but I think it's really, really cool and it's definitely, definitely worth to pick up in trade paperback form. Next, we have Blade the Vampire Hunter, who made his debut in The Tomb of Dracula number 10 from 1973. How could we forget about Blade? Any list containing horror comic book characters has to include Blade. Uh, he's probably one of the more popular uh, characters on the list, and uh, he's just absolutely solid. We have a lot of great comics about Blade, and definitely a lot of great movies that Marvel did. Uh, about Blade. Funny enough, one of the first movies that Marvel ever did about one of their characters happened to be Blade, who is a horror comic book character. So I think that he's definitely significant. Now we haven't really heard much from Blade in the last few years. It kind of makes me wonder if Marvel plans on doing anything new with this character. And I really hope they do because I love the character Blade and I would love to see him on the big screen again. And I would love to see even more comic book content containing the character. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here. In our next spot, we have John Constantine, the Hellblazer, who made his first appearance in the Saga of the Swamp Thing, number 73. And this is another better known horror character that is uh, appearing on this list. And Hellblazer is usually uh, a character that is published under the uh, Vertigo imprint, but he has um, appeared under the DC Comics logo a few times in the past. Hellblazer is definitely a great character. We've had numerous amazing runs with uh, Hellblazer, and not to mention we've even had a great movie called Constantine uh, starring Keanu Reeves. I don't know if you guys liked it or not, but I personally uh, enjoyed the film, and I, I really hope they do more with Constantine in the future. Hellboy, which is a Mike Mignola creation, and the series in which he first appeared in had just absolutely amazing art, amazing uh, stories, and uh, he became so popular that years later they actually gave him a movie. So that definitely earns him this spot on the list. Now we are getting into my all-time favorite horror comic book characters, starting with the Marvel Werewolf. Uh, who was most famously featured in uh, Werewolf by Night, but that's not where he made his first appearance. He made his first appearance in Marvel Spotlight number two from 1972. I absolutely love the Werewolf by Night series, and it's not because Moon Knight makes his first appearance in the series. I really think it sucks, and I think I feel bad for the Werewolf because he's so overshadowed by the fact that Moon Knight first appears in his title. Like people care more about Moon Knight than they do about the actual werewolf. But to tell you the truth, I'm one of the few that probably cares more for werewolf and all the issues that precede the uh, first appearance of Moon Knight. I love Werewolf by Night, have it in my collection, read it multiple times, and uh, definitely a must if you are a horror comic book fan. I definitely worth to pick up in uh, floppy form or uh, in trade paperback form. Next, we have the Marvel interpretation of Dracula, which made his first appearance in The Tomb of Dracula, number one, from 1972. And this is another character who is a classic character. Marvel definitely did not invent the character of Dracula, who uh, first appeared as a character back in the 1800s in uh, Bram Stoker's classic Dracula novel. But I really loved Marvel's interpretation 
of the character because I felt it was very smartly written and it was also very kind of true to all the lore and um, and myth behind the Dracula character. Really, really enjoyed it. Dracula is also a title that gave us Blade, but uh, I definitely don't think that Blade overshadows Dracula in the same way that Moon Knight overshadows Werewolf. I think you've noticed by now that a lot of these horror characters have appeared in the 1970s. And if you've noticed that, I, I'm really glad that you did because the 1970s was like this, this revival and this renewed interest in horror comic books because if you know your comic book history a little bit, comic books that dealt with horror in the 1950s came under huge, huge criticism and were heavily, heavily persecuted because of a lot of work and literature that was going around about the effects of comic book comic books on um, on, on youth and, and their development. And I don't want to get into Frederick Wortham again because I've talked about him many, many times on this channel. Check out some of the other videos on the channel that deal with the crusade against comic books. But all you need to know is for a while, horror comics pretty much almost ceased publication. And if they did still kind of publish, like the stories were very, very tame and, and, and really boring. But once the laws on the comic code authority were relaxed, publishers started bringing back all of these classic horror elements to comic books. And in the 70s, you start seeing this big boom of horror comic books again. And that is one of the reasons why I love the 1970s in comic books, because it's not only an awesome era for superhero comic books, but it's also amazing for horror comics. And I am personally a huge fan of the horror genre. Next up, we have the Man-Thing, who made his first appearance in Savage Tales number one from 1972. Absolutely love this character. His name probably could have used a little bit of work because unfortunately the Man-Thing is subject to endless amounts of dick jokes, specifically with this comic book cover right here, the giant size man thing. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's all laugh about it. But if you can get beyond all the weenie jokes that are associated with the character, you'll find that the man thing titles are actually really, really great reads and definitely classics, cult classics for, for, for horror f that come out of the 1970s. And they're absolutely amazing. I definitely recommend picking up either a trade paperback or some of the floppies. I have the uh, second man thing series in my collection i believe i have the first 20 issues and every single one of them are great i don't think there's one issue uh that i read of the man thing that i was disappointed in so definitely worth to check out man thing and following man thing is the dc version of man thing who is swamp thing who made his first appearance in house of secrets number 92 from 1971 and i guess we can call swamp thing the dc version of man thing and man thing the marvel version of swamp thing but i think if you're going to compare the two swamp thing definitely overshadows man thing as the better of the two characters i love both characters but i definitely think that comic book fans adore Swamp Thing a lot more than they do the Man Thing. I'm just generalizing here. If you prefer Man Thing, please let me know in the comments. But I personally love both, but I think I prefer uh, Swamp Thing. And that is because over the years, we have had some amazing, amazing Swamp Thing stories. Uh, I've read a few interpretations of Swamp Thing. Uh, believe it or not, I'm only reading the uh, Alan Moore run on Swamp Thing right now. I found all the trade paperbacks uh, for Alan Moore's run on Swamp Thing at the library. And I'm currently reading them right now, which is great to be doing in October. And I am just eating them up. I'm like probably reading one of those trades a day. I just, I, I can't stop reading it for how, how good it is. Uh, I have to say though, I'm not a really a big fan of the um, alien issue that he did. Uh, that one I was kind of disappointed in. It was just kind of hurt my head a little bit, but otherwise every other issue from that is absolutely amazing. Before reading the Alan Moore run on Swamp Thing, my favorite was the Scott Snyder run on Swamp Thing from uh, DC's New 52. And this was absolutely great for the first 15 issues or so. Once it started tying in a lot with Animal Man and the Rot and the Red, yeah, the idea was great. And, and I read it and I thought it was pretty good, but I really liked uh, the Swamp Thing book as a standalone uh, rather than tying in a lot with, uh, with Animal Man. But... I definitely would 
go and check out the Swamp Thing. The must reads for this character are definitely the Alan Moore run on Swamp Thing and f from the 1980s and uh, the Scott Snyder run on Swamp Thing from uh, 2011 on. And I'm sure you've already guessed who the characters in the top three spots are. And they are, of course, the hosts of the EC Comics line of comic books. In our number three spot, we have the Vault Keeper, uh, who was the star and the host of the Vault of Horror. Uh, in our number two spot, we have the Old Witch, who was the host and the star of the Haunt of Fear. And in our number one spot, we have none other than the Crypt Keeper, who was the host of the comic book Tales from the Crypt, and later on in the 1980s, the host of the television series, which was wildly popular, Tales from the Crypt, which aired on HBO. When it comes to horror comic books, the EC line of horror comic books, without a doubt, is sacred text. If you love horror comic books, you have to check out The Haunt of Fear, The Vault of Horror, and above all, Tales from the Crypt. These are absolutely amazing, amazing reads, and they were really, really advanced and great with a lot of the themes and ideas that they dealt with um, at the time that they were published, and they really kind of hold up well in uh, reading them today. I, I, I enjoy them. I have a lot of the um, collected editions of um, most of the uh, EC line of horror comics. The only ones I don't have are the Haunt of Fear, but I have some of the uh, Vault of Horror trades, and I have, I think, probably the first, I'm just looking at my shelf here, the first six volumes of Tales from the Crypt, which I absolutely love, and love reading around this, uh, this time of year. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I usually post the covers of a lot of these uh, EC horror comics. To me, the Crypt Keeper and uh, the EC horror comics are to Halloween what Santa Claus is to Christmas. They're just absolutely essential, and that is why they deserve the top three spots on this list. So that about does it for our video today. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Do you agree with this list? Are there any characters that you feel I left out? Or do you feel that there are any characters that actually appeared on this list that should have been scored a little better? Please let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please check out the channel for other videos on topics related to geek culture. Leave me a like, it really, really helps me out. And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.